So this is the donor 3 liter V6 ECU. And I'm gonna try to put a MS3X in it. So I've already did this with a, with a bricked AEM V1 for an old Toyota Supra. And I just 3D printed this plate and these panels are the mega squirt and then I made some extended IDE cables, ribbon cables. And I was able to flip this over in this area. So I'm hoping I can do something like that for this. So, so far I've just taken out the two screws on the side and then uh, tried to figure out exactly what I need to do to get this thing apart. So on the bottom here, these heat sinks, they're all screwed into the, the housing. And then there are three of these screws that have been soldered onto the board. So I'm gonna try to heat these up with a soldering iron and then uh, take them out. They, they are a Torx bit. It's difficult to see that one, but they are a Torx. So hopefully I can heat that up, melt the solder enough and just take it off with a screwdriver. Soldering iron just wasn't cutting it. So I'm out here in the garage. I have to use a uh, torch for this and I already got these two out. So, uh, I just wanted to show this process and I've got this pretty heavy duty, uh, what is it, uh, map gas, but uh, it's doing the job. So you don't necessarily need something this heavy. Uh, I got a T15, so I'm just going to basically torch the hell out of this PCB board until I can push that into the solder, into the fitting, and then... There we go. Alrighty. So now, let's, that is separated, separate, separated English. It's my third language. So the plan, I think the plan now is to cut the PCB board right at the ECU connector. So we're just left with the header panel here. And there we have it. One successfully chopped off ECU board. And it worked out pretty nicely. The cut was a little wonky on that left side, but you know, it's all right. And it looks like I'm able to use those existing screws the uh, pushing the solder out pretty much made them usable. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run with that. All right, so I've got my ECU here, my ECU box here, and I've got my mega squirt and I've ran into an issue. So you see if I get the PCB board of the mega squirt just about or right up against that ECU header. The back of the board just barely fits in the ECU box. So that would, to make this fit, you'd have to desolder all of these headers, these uh, serial port headers, and then maybe even remove the map sensor, the internal map sensor and run an external one, which is, that's not too much of an issue. But the, the headers or these, these connectors would absolutely have to come off to get this board to sit down inside this box. And then uh, more modifications to the box to make that USB port usable. That's not a big deal. But personally, it's not worth the risk of cooking one of these leads on this PCB board because this is a completely fine working unit. So I've got a backup plan. And that backup plan is a Speedwino. You can see it's the same thing, but more simple version of a Mega Squirt. It doesn't have the same resolution, doesn't have the same inputs and outputs, but it is essentially a poor man's Mega Squirt. So this guy is absolutely tiny. 
and with the cases installed there's plenty of space in this box to mount this so uh, this wasn't going so well for the most part you can get to these terminals after you scrub off that rubberized coating but just the the density here is they're too the the terminals are just too close together so once you start layering a bunch of wires in here it just becomes a pain in the ass so I did a little searching on the internet and I found something really awesome a breakout board for the uh, Ford ECU connector so this will make things a hell of a lot easier and uh, of all places it's eBay so I'm gonna see about taking this header panel or this ECU header off of this little bit of PCB board and then uh, put it on this guy. So this was an absolute pain in the ass. So if you're going to do this, um, either have the proper equipment to work on PCBs, which is like one of those hot jets that basically just melts the solder on the on the surface mount stuff and just have that solder melt out of all those terminals on the factory board. I tried to use heat, like a torch to do that, and just cook the board on one side, and you can see there. And it just, the, the torch I have is just too big. It was just melting the board versus, you know, melting the solder. So plan B was uh, basically taking the snips and just chipping away as much of it as I could until I got to a point where I could just use the soldering iron and, and take out the individual rings from the old PCB. Then there's too much solder on here to, to, to just sit it right down on this board. So I had to get some of this solder wick and uh, that basically saved the day here. So once the, um, once the board comes off of this, these pins are free floating. You can see they look very deformed through here because as soon as that board and as soon as you torqued on the board when you're chipping it apart, it just it, these pins just move up and down freely because the heat melts the plastic that they're bedded into, and then they start wiggling and creating a you know a tolerance there that they can move. So that in turn makes them slightly misaligned. Like you can see that one right there, it's misaligned now. So before I do the final solder on this, I'm gonna get the harness and actually connect the ECU connector into this and that should hopefully align all these terminals to a point where once I take that connector out I can reinstall it without you know worrying about these terminals being misaligned so I'm at the point now after doing some very uh, annoying align realignments to get these you know all these pins to line up but I mean that's just the name of the game when it comes to doing something like this but uh, yeah, like I said, like I was saying, I, I'm I'm at the point where I can start soldering the stuff. But the um, one thing I did notice, this board was not based off of this ECU uh, box. So once that header goes in, you can see the 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 bolt holes don't line up. Well, not a big deal. When you put the the back cover on this, it doesn't really matter all that much. So it's still, it still holds it in place, and there is an, uh, an air gap there, so you don't have to worry about it uh, shorting out anything. So, you know, and that's, this is the thicker side of the two covers that fits this, so even if you had wires running from the bottom here, I don't think you'd have to worry about any shorting unless you just had a gob of solder on there. But I'm going to try to get all of my wires coming out of the top. So, on to the next step, and... We'll cut there. So I, I got this to work finally. Um, I did have some issues. Two of the bottom pins were being bent out of the way and crushed while this was being installed. So this is very important to do this and, and put this connector together prior to doing any soldering because those pins are just loosey-goosey in there. Now maybe if you had the the proper way to remove that header panel that wouldn't be the case but in my case at least uh, 
you got to be very careful. So I did just run this about halfway down, pulled it back out. Um, I did that about four times, and every the, the last time was the first somewhat successful. Uh, you know, I haven't seeded it all the way down. So that's what I'm going to do right now and see if uh, – and then back it all the way back out and see if the pins are still okay. I think they will be though. And there we are, fully seated. Nothing poking out the back. All right, I got this thing loose here. And we look 99% okay. There's one pin right there, second row from the left. It's a little off from the others. I may just go in there with the pliers and straighten it out a bit. It's one thing I hate about this style connector. It's just these pins are way too fragile, especially in automotive applications. But, you know, they do work. All right, I'm going to straighten that up and then put this back together and start soldering. And we're soldered. I am by no means a professional solderer. <laughs> but uh, I got the job done. Yeah, it's not perfect in the sense that some of these pins did not come all the way through. But you know what? I got a solid connection. So I'm probably going to figure out which pins I'm in actual need of for the uh, Mega Squirt or the... Arduino squirt, Speedduino, and probe those pins between here and where they end up in the harness just to be sure that I've got a good continuity there. Here's the end result. So this was a royal pain in the ass because I didn't feel like waiting for another pigtail harness from uh, Speedduino. I attempted to desolder these two headers ended up damaging one of the landing pads, one of the solder pads for the ground. So I had to glob. I had to scrape some of this, this uh, coating off, this black coating, and then glob some extra solder down into that to make the connection to, to the trace. So if uh, you're in this position, just wait and buy the little, the little connector harness kit from them and you do it that way because that's just so much more clean. And uh, you don't have to worry about damaging the Speedduino board. So, that aside, I've got all my connections. The, uh, the the two or the three oddball ones, well, they're not really odd. The one being the flex fuel input, since the 5.0 doesn't have one. I just added that extra wire to the same pin that the Ranger would have. And then these two, pins 1 and 27, are the shift solenoid pins. I'm using those for my boost control solenoid and my fan control solenoid. So that's, um, or not solenoid, but, you know, fan control relay. So I'm going to pick up those two wires in the transmission harness connector that's over the bell housing typically, and then just pull those harness, those wires back out and reroute them somewhere in the harness where I can get to them to put a connector and then uh, extend those wires out to the sensor or to the relay in the solenoid. The, uh, the last wire here, this is VR two negative which is the cam pickup negative and what's interesting to me is that the on the on the 50 and it may be common with fords i'm not entirely sure the cam pickups negative side is common to the sensor ground that goes back to the ecu so what i don't know is if the speedduino board needs this dedicated cam sensor ground or if it will function on the positive side. That's so I'm not entirely sure about that. So part of this is going to be some experimenting, maybe do some digging on some forms to see if anybody's dealt with that. So if it works, I'm just going to keep the, I'm going to tape off the end of this and just keep it coiled up in here. It's not hurting anything, just chilling in there. If it doesn't work, then I've got this wire ready to go where I can hit a pad on the breakout board. So at this point, I just need to order a right hand USB cable, have it chilling back here, and I'm considering putting that little plate back in and just, if I have enough space here, it does not look like I do, maybe uh, one of the bulkhead fittings for a USB, that way I can just slide this ECU out of the firewall and then hook up the USB, do what I need to do, 
and then unplug. Because I, I don't see a way of getting a USB cable through the front here and then still be able to slide it in and have it underneath that, that factory bezel. But, uh, you know, if I come up with something else, you'll definitely see.